Boys, lads, boys, we're going to make a tier list. Welcome to the official, unofficial Feedback Gaming support company tier list, where I will scrutinize and rip apart your favorite support companies. Be aware, most of the support companies I will rank in this tier list will be based upon my single player experience, where I may sprinkle a little bit of multiplayer in there as well, just a sprinkle. So first of all, we've got the logistics company. Logistics has been pretty strong throughout the entire history of Hearts of Iron 4. Logistics was something that was always used preferentially for very large divisions. This would be a requirement. You could not go without this. Logistics really was king. And then, then we got the supply reform. And supply now is something that's harder to get hold of than ever due to the new mechanics. So logistics company has been massively propelled up. One being useful before, now being omega useful. But get this, get this. That's not all. Look at that. Plus five breakthrough for logistics companies. It does require trucks as well as support equipment. Oh God, but that's not only, that's not only it. Not only does it reduce supply, it reduces fuel consumption as well. Up to a maximum of minus 20 fuel, 40 supply reduction. There is no shadow of a doubt. Logistics, if you are making a big division, is essential. It is an S tier. The only issue with logistics is it can get a bit pricey for your trucks if you put it on all divisions, which late game in no step back, you might actually be doing that. But for the most part, it is essential as a part of a very large division. Next, signal companies. This is another example of a support company that, that used to be very niche. People would only add signal companies to those big fat tank divisions because what it would do is increase initiative. Or initiative allows you to reinforce f faster, which is a bit, a little bit like reinforce rate. Technically, it is reinforced rate, but it also has the bonus of it increases your max planning speed. They were fast planner plus 25% extra planning. Initiative does this, and it also does this. It's a combination of two. So it increases planning speed, and it also increases reinforce rate. Both of those are very, very good. But get this, in no step back, they added an extra attribute, a hidden attribute. If you read the tooltip, who does that right? The higher the initiative a unit has, the quicker it can reinforce into battle like I just said, and the quicker it can get its planning done, like I just said. Initiative also implies any coordination modifier you have. So extra coordination will be amplified by this number by 12%. And you can ask the question, what is coordination, Dave? Coordination increases the amount of damage dealt to the primary target in combat, or the damage spread over other targets. So in combat at the moment, when divisions fight divisions, all the damage is equally divided and spread between all of them. Uh, in the old way, the division at the very top would take most of the damage, if not all the damage. Coordination basically reverts back to the old system, where the top division takes all the damage. This is very, very useful for tank divisions because you want to knock out the top target as quickly as possible. So this obviously buffs tank tanks by a massive degree. And then with signal companies on top of that, that number is amplified further still. 12%, 12%, 12%, basically 50 plus. Signal companies are very good, but once again, it's not a support company you want to add on an extra division. It is something that is more attuned to that big, heavy punk division. It is very good. It is very good. It's not essential though. And also, it tends to work the best for tanks. So it is an A tier. It is A tier. Next up, field hospitals. Oh God, people love to role play so much. And a lot of you guys live and die by field hospitals. The most common question is, Dave, Dave, how good are field hospitals? Are they any good? Should I make them? Are they worthwhile? Nine times out of 10? Nope. They're useless. They're complete crap. It's the biggest dilemma in Hoi 4. If, you, if you're a big enough nation and you've got enough manpower, you don't need to worry about trying to conserve manpower. It's a waste of time. And then when it comes down to the extra bonus that field hospitals get, which is trickle back factor, which basically means that they can hold on to their XP for longer, the amount isn't high enough to actually make a worthy impact. And once again, in Hoi 4, if you're a small nation that doesn't have a lot of manpower, you probably like, oh, field hospitals would be a perfect pick there for like Hungary or Slovakia or Bulgaria. No, because these nations start off so small with very little military factories. You don't really want to be delegating trucks and support equipment and research into field hospitals when you're already a small nation to begin with. It's one of those catch-22s. You're already big, you've got the manpower, so you don't need to worry about casualties, or you're small and you need to worry about manpower, but you don't have the production to make field hospitals. So at the end of the day, where do field hospitals even fit in? They never do. It's a D tier. Pretty much an F tier, to be honest with you. Field hospitals 
are so, so unbelievably niche. So niche. Uh, the only nations I can think would kind of work with them is maybe Italy or Romania because you don't have this amazingly high population, but you do start off with a reasonable industry so you can support it. But man, there's just so few nations that can even really benefit from them. Field hospitals are one of the shittiest support divisions in Hoi 4. And I say that because I love this game and I want to make it better. Man, they really need to buff field hospitals. They're just so rubbish. Maintenance companies. So maintenance companies used to be rubbish. They used to only improve reliability, which is basically reducing attrition and reducing the ch chance of equipment getting lost in active combat. Reliability 5%. But then the problem was is the 5% wasn't high enough. 5%, 5%. So a total of extra 20% extra reliability maxed out. Man, that's rubbish. It's so small. It's tiny. But on the other hand, it doesn't require trucks. Only these three support companies require trucks. These ones don't. So these ones are cheaper. Be aware too. This is something a lot of you guys don't know about. We'll get to it when we get to it. But maintenance companies only requires 25 support equipment. 30, 20, 20. Oh, that's interesting. Field company. Field hospitals are more expensive. I can't even believe it. But not only do maintenance company improve reliability. Not only that. But they also add capture ratio. And I think this is actually a hidden stat. It's actually really good. 5%, 5%, 5%. So basically, all losses that you in the enemy incurs, you will recuperate 20% of maxed out maintenance companies of all of their equipment that they've lost. This adds up. I think personally, this is a potentially game breaking stat. Because if you're a nation that goes on a lot of conquests and gets into a lot of fighting, like Germany or the Soviet Union, you can potentially capture a ridiculous amount of equipment. And whenever you're capturing equipment, this is equipment that you don't have to produce. So the end up result is you end up having so much excess equipment, it's ridiculous. Next time you play a game, from the very beginning as Germany, add maintenance companies on as early as possible, upgrade them as early as possible, and then jump into your equipment here and check how much foreign equipment you've got. You will have Polish, Danish, Dutch, Belgiumish, Luxembourgish, French. You will have every nationality of equipment under the sun and you'll have a ridiculous amount of them as well. How good is it though? How good is it you say? I'm really tempted to go to A tier with it. I really am. I'll go with A. I think the potential with this one is pretty big actually. It is a bit like a signal company where it's something that you don't always make every game, but it potentially, if you pull it off correctly, it can be really OP. Military police. So if you're not aware, military police reduces a suppression amount by the first one is 20. So 30, 40, 50. So a full 50% reduction. Uh, this is a really confusing stat because a lot of people don't fully understand it. It, it. What it does is it reduces the size of a garrison by the percentage amount. So for instance, if you've got a horse division that's garrisoning to, to reduce suppression and you add a military police four onto it, the amount of guns and manpower required for that horse division is reduced by 50%. It's basically making the garrison smaller smaller so you, you don't need to designate as many guns and manpower but anyway regardless of what it does is it makes your division smaller so therefore you don't have as big garrisons it's a little bit niche i'll be i'll be totally honest with you. it's niche it's one of those ones you don't need to make and you could pretty happily even as germany get away with not making it so it is a beta it's one of those ones where you don't really need to make them unless you really do need to need to make them honestly if you are a small nation like hungary and you've conquered all the balkans mps will go a long way because so think about it think about it think about it if you you max out your MP on a cavalry or an armored car division when you're garrisoning more than you've got land that you've got cores on you're saving 50% of the manpower and 50% of the guns so as a minor nation this will definitely benefit you but because it's beta because it's more niche next another one oh my god here we have boys hello darkness my old friend the engineer to be honest with you, the reason I'm making this video is because I wanted to talk about engineers. It wasn't meant to be a whole tier list of all of the companies. It was just going to be talking about engineers. Here's the hot take. Are you ready for this? Are you sitting down? Engineers are overrated. They're overrated. I think what people find with engineers is they're adding them onto the wrong divisions. I think an infantry division that's holding the front line will benefit massively from an engineer. So as you can see, look really closely. You see Fort, River, Amphibious, Forest, Hills, Jungle, and marsh and you can see there's lots of defense modifiers so you're getting a set defense bonus in certain terrain types and then top it on as well you're also getting entrenchment to dig in over over time as well and then if you look at the very very top can you see right at the top there it says plus 30 defense that's a massive amount of defense i think what people don't fully understand about this is engineers are specifically a defensive support company to begin with the reason why i don't rate engineers very highly is they're expensive 
Support equipment plus 30 per division adds up. So you can see support equipment for military police is only 10. A reconnaissance company is only 10. So the cost of an engineer is three times as much as a recon, three times as a military police. Engineers are expensive, guys. Don't add it up. Have you ever added engineers onto your infantry before? And you go into your production tab and you, you've, you've got, you're down like 4,000 support equipment. It's because engineers are expensive, man. They're not cheap. Let me just talk about what you gain, though, for engineers. I think you need to go through the things. So first of all, you get a set defensive bonus. You get entrenchment over time, which is basically more defense if you sat on a, on a province for a set amount of time. And the other bonus is that amphibious, 25% amphibious. That's really big, that. If you are doing amphibious invasions, amphibious invasions, if you don't already know, are really difficult to pull off. The, the smallest thing you can actually do is to add an engineer on. So if you're doing certain things like defending, engineer is very good. If you are doing amphibious invasion, engineer is very good. Holding a front line, not necessarily attacking, engineer is very good. If you are attacking over a river, can you see that 25% movement bonus over a river? Can you see that? That's also pretty good. And that's kind of the only reason people add these onto tank divisions. That 25% to river modifier is actually pretty big because it cancels out the, the negative modifier of speed that you get with rivers anyway. There's one other thing you need to make you aware of as well. Whenever you upgrade engineer companies, you get more entrenchment plus two entrenchment. It's not a massive amount, it's very small. But not only that, you also get, each time you upgrade it, an attack bonus and defense bonus into certain terrain types. Forts, plus 10%. Next one is river, that one is really good. 10% extra attack for rivers, very good. And then finally, 10% attack for urban as well. So I personally think these are overrated, and I think the reason people add these to all divisions, I think they're stupid. I think the truth is, the only divisions that, if you can afford it, these divisions should be attached onto infantry. And then, if you can afford it, you add it onto tanks. But be aware, if there's like five support companies that you would definitely need to add onto tanks, I would put this at the very bottom. I'm gonna give the engineer company a B tier. Oh God, you guys are mad. You're so mad. Oh, you're so mad. This is the deal. Yeah, I'll just go through the points again. One, the niche, defensive, holding front lines, amphibious invasions, movement speed over rivers. These are all niche. They're all niche. So when it comes down to it, when you can add this onto a tank, yeah, you can do for the speed bonus of rivers and some of these attack bonuses that you get more late game. Out of all the support companies to add on, this would be the last one I'd think of for a tank division, for a heavy 45 width tank division or whatever, you know what I mean? Just be aware engineers are very expensive compared to a lot of other support companies. And just keep that in mind when you're adding these guys on in bulk. Because remember, these are holding, holding, holding your front line. They're not attacking for you. Armored Recon Company. This was adding a little resistance and it got kind of buffed in no step back. The beauty of this one is if you make a specific tank division that has really good stats, these stats will follow through onto the division they're added onto, which potentially can give you a lot of breakthrough and a decent amount of armor and a decent amount of soft attack. So potentially they all add on too. You can even add on hard attack. You can make a specific hard attack recon tank to add on to your infantry division. This is something you never thought of, isn't it? Or specifically a piercing tank, a piercing light tank to add on to your infantry. There's lots of versatility there, lots of options you've got there. And of course, it does the basic thing which all reconnaissance companies does, which adds reconnaissance, which increases your chance of winning a dice roll on tactics. So therefore, you'll have a tactic advantage and then potentially do more damage and a lot of other things. I think out of all the reconnaissance companies, though, I think armored reconnaissance potentially can be the good. I don't think it's the best. So I'm going to give it a B tier. Reconnaissance is important. But I think of all the reconnaissance options, I think Armoured is probably one of the weakest. And don't forget as well, reconnaissance companies also add an extra 10% movement speed on to all of your divisions for all terrain types. So be aware of that. That's really important. But for the future upgrade, just adds more reconnaissance. But look at all these movement speed bonuses. This is really good for a tank. I personally feel like if you've got a tank without reconnaissance, what are you doing with your life? Light Armoured Car Reconnaissance. So this is the one that adds more reconnaissance, which gives you the bigger bonus for chance of beating tactics in battle plus it has the bonuses of armored cars which are basically like a light tank but not as good is there anything else to say other than that really to be honest with you out of all the recon companies it, it basically is the best it is the best uh because at the end of the day you're adding reconnaissance on for two reasons one the movement speed and two for the raw reconnaissance stat and anyway, next one is armored reconnaissance this is one of these kind of ones you go for if you've got a lot of uh, excess trucks i mean in most cases you do have a lot of trucks i suppose it is basically the i have too many trucks therefore i'm not going to go for horses so therefore, I'll go for the motorized. And once again, this will go into the B tier as well. It is just cavalry reconnaissance. You're adding it on because you want the reconnaissance value. And it's slightly more reconnaissance than cavalry. Is there anything else to say other than that? Not really. And then you've got the very final one, which is C tier. Not dismissing it. Reconnaissance is important. But the honest truth is, cavalry reconnaissance has the least bonuses. But it's cheap. I'm starting to debate actually whether it should just be C tier anyway. 
because at the end of the day reconnaissance is important as a stat but then i asked us asked the question it's like <laughs> i don't know like how important is it a stat motorized has more defense and breakthrough and soft attack armored cars have less soft attack and breakthrough but you get more reconnaissance and then uh, the best stats are armored recon companies but you're getting less reconnaissance so it's a uh, Catch 22, I guess. It's so hard to rate these ones, actually. It's really difficult. I think maybe my instincts are leaning more towards that and that. This one, because it's cheap. This, because it's niche, because you only make it when you've got excess motorized. And these ones give the best stats overall anyway. Yeah, I'm sticking to that. I'm sticking to that. Anyway, next one. Support rocket artillery. Once again, the role players love this. I know the role players adore this. It gives you lots of breakthrough. It's the highest breakthrough of all the support companies. And breakthrough is the stat that you gain from rockets. A breakthrough is armor on the offensive. It's expensive. It requires lots of research time. To max it out, you've got to go down a load of paths. You've got to go down all these paths. Then you've got to go down all of these paths to get all the bonuses. It's one of those things that potentially when you max them out, they're actually really OP, but you rarely get to that location. To max them out is 1946. And I suppose you could rush them if you wanted to and get them in maybe 944 if you really wanted to push it. Once again, it's really good when you max it out, but for the honest truth is they're poo. I'm sorry, Rocket fans. I know you guys really love them, but I'm so sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Nah, they're just not very good. And that's the reason why no one makes them, because it's just not very really good. Support artillery, on the other hand, is the easiest way of adding a really juicy amount of soft attack to a division. So I'm going to have to give this an A tier. It's cheap. You only add, off to, uh, add on 12 artillery per division. You gain a massive chunk of soft attack. It's a really easy way of increasing the amount of soft attack on a division. If you're a minor power and you're trying to like be hungry invading Austria or hungry invading Romania, this division will make your division so much more robust and stronger, more powerful. And it's on a budget. It's cheap. Our support artillery is... 100%, 100% underrated. Except we have support anti-tank. Oh, God. Another one that I feel like the community really loves, and I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's another one the community is really mad for, but I really just don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, once again, you're not really adding on much soft attack, which is what infantry tend to use the most. You're never going to add this onto a tank. Why would you add this onto a tank? Because the tank's doing all the soft attack, uh, doing all the hard attack and piercing anyway. So I suppose you're adding on as for a defensive purpose onto infantry once again i still don't really get my head around whereabouts in the game this fits maybe the multiplayer bail multiplayer boils in the chat are like screaming at me right now saying what the hell dave you put this this is, needs to be a part of your every division blah 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 at the end of the day make a tank division make a tank division i feel it has a use adding one of these on denies like 80 percent of tank templates you know what i mean and i can suppose you could add on support anti-tank too onto your tank divisions for the extra bite on your tanks i suppose uh, so i feel like it has a purpose but i feel like the purpose is just overridden by actual proper tanks this is one of my personal favorites support anti-air so hear me out here this is doing what anti-tank does so it adds piercing and in most single player games it's enough piercing to pierce 90 percent of ai tank divisions not that the ai makes very good tank divisions but when it does hey you're gonna be piercing them yay plus anti-air is very useful because at the end of the day it, it's denying Cass, it prevents the division from getting completely air superiorated. Sup air superiorated? That's a new word I made up. And you're getting a little bit of soft attack, so you're making your individuals a little bit well-rounded and a bit of defense too. It's basically the jack of all trades. It does a little bit of everything, a little bit of soft attack, a little bit of defense, a little bit of anti-tank. You know, it does a little bit of everything. And personally, I really like it. I really like it a lot. Oh God, here, go here we're gonna get mad. I don't personally think it's one of those ones you go without. I'm even leaning toward S tier with it. I feel like it is S tier. I, to be honest with you, support artillery is something you could go without. But I don't think you can go without support anti-air. You really can't. And the final one is Le Flame Tank. And here we are, boys. The three horsemen of the apocalypse. The Flame Tank. Similar to like tank reconnaissance, you can infuse a division with some really cool stats. Such as armor, breakthrough, heart attack piercing just by adding on the right support uh, support company and for the most part light medium and heavy is just simply a calculation based on how much armor you want to add on and how much production costs that's simple as it so heavy tank here adds on 15 15 mediums and 15 lights so basically what you're saying to yourself is 
can I afford to go for heavies to add the best stats on? And then it results in significantly more attack. I didn't even mention that. I should have mentioned that. Yeah, so the reason why you add flame tanks on, as you can see here, adds loads of extra attack onto different terrain types. 20% on the forts, 10% for rivers. You can set rivers on fire. Amazing. Amphibious 10%. 15 forests, 5 hills, 5 mountains, set mountains on fire. Amazing. 20% urban, 20%. Jungle, set your jungles on fire. 20% and 5% for marsh. That's right. Basically, instead of driving through the marshes, you set them on fire. And all of those stats are amazing. So the only truth is when you're choosing between light, medium, heavy, you're basically just you're deciding based upon how much production costs I've got. How, what can I afford? Now, if you guys aren't familiar with the little cheese, little exploit, you basically select your interwar light tank, you make it as cheap as humanly possible, and then you add a flamer on it, and there you go. This is your absolute cheap flamer on a budget. Three production costs. I understand the stats in this tank, they're not very good at all. But remember, you're doing it because you want the terrain modifiers. You want those bonuses. See those bonuses, the green ones? You're doing it for the bonuses. So you either have a choose between either you go for the heavy flamer tank, add all the stats on, make it a really awesome tank, expensive but it adds all the great extra breakthrough armor piercing stats and whatnot or you go for a cheap ass light tank the way i've just done there regardless you already know where this is going that is feedback gaming's support company tier list